Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this webinar of the Geographical Sciences Committee of the United States National Academy of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. Our speaker today is Dr. Doug Richardson, who will be providing an overview of the ethics landscape in the geographical sciences. This is just the first webinar in a series organized by the Geographical Sciences Committee uh, on ethics and biases in geographical sciences. My name is Glenn McDonald, and I'm a member of the Geographical Sciences Committee. I'll be having the honor of moderating today's webinar. Here's a few quick notes before we get started. Doug will speak for about 30 minutes, and then we'll have a question and answer period for the remainder of the hour. We will be taking your questions through the Q&A box, which is located at the bottom of your screen. Simply type your question in the box at any time and click send. We'll be collecting the questions and then we'll be asking them of Doug at the end of his presentation. I wanna tell you that this webinar is being recorded Please understand that any question you submit may be read aloud and included in the recording. A link to the recording, as well as a copy of the slides will be posted on our website within the week. If you have any technical issues during the event, please contact Zoom support. Before I turn to Doug, I just wanna say a few things about the Geographical Sciences Committee. May I have the next slide, please? The Geographical Sciences Committee is a standing committee of the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. The National Academies themselves are a nonprofit organization with the dual mission of honoring the nation's top scientists and providing objective, independent advice on science, technology, engineering, and medicine. National Academies were established under the direction of President Lincoln and have been providing these services to the country for over 150 years. May I have the next slide, please? The Geographical Sciences Committee has a mission of providing advice to society and government at all levels using, on using the methods of spatial analysis representation. We address the geographic dimensions of human environment interactions, spatial location and concentration, place-based research, and policy at all spatial scales. The committee also fosters international cooperation by serving as the liaison to other national geographical committees and to the International Geographical Union. The committee thanks the National Sciences Foundation for funding. May I have the next slide? Here's a list of the current members of the committee and the committee membership does change and represents uh, the breadth of geography. May I have the next slide, please? This just gives you an, an overview of some of the issues that the committee has tackled in the last few years and provided uh, uh, advice on and provided webinars on and, and provided a dialogue on. So quite, quite a wide range. Uh, may I have the next slide, please? Now I have the pleasure of introducing today, today's speaker, uh, Douglas Richardson. Doug is a distinguished researcher at the Center for Geographic Analysis and the Institute of Quantitative Social Sciences at Harvard University. Previously, he was the longest serving executive director of the American Association of Geographers. Doug led a highly successful renewal of that organization. He greatly, greatly expanded the AAG's membership and international footprint, developed dynamic and wide ranging new research initiatives and built a strong academic publishing and financial foundation which carries the AAG forward today and ensures geography's future. Prior to joining the AAG, uh, Doug founded and was the president of Geo Research Incorporated, a scientific research firm that developed and patented the world's first real-time space-time interactive GPS GIS functionality. That's transformed the way in which geospatial data and geographic information is now collected, experienced, mapped, and used within geography and many, many other disciplines as well. The concepts, technology, and, and innovations pioneered by Doug and Geo Research are now ubiquitous and at the heart of a wide array of real-time uh, interactive mapping, navigation, mobile computing, consumer devices such as cell phones, and location-based business applications. They have also become 
uh, central to real-time management, day-to-day -day operations of large government entities, corporations, and NGOs. Doug sold his company and the core patents in 1998 and has since continued to develop the, the field of real-time space time in integration in geography and the geographic information sciences through international and interdisciplinary research in areas such as health, sustainable environments, economic development, human rights, and coupled natural human systems. More recently, he's been working on the integration of spatial concepts, data, and analysis in the humanities and social sciences. So it is my pleasure now then to turn this over uh, to Doug. Hello, uh, thank you, Glenn. Can everyone hear me? Um, well, I'd like to. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to thank the um, the National Academies and, uh, and the uh, Ge Geographic Sciences Committee uh, for hosting these. Not only this this uh, webinar, but a whole series on the, on the topic of um, of ethics. So. Um, what I'm, what I'm going to do is, um, because this is the first of, of several in the series, I'm gonna to try to provide a, a, a basic um, foundation for the whole series to do a broad uh, overview of uh, issues and topics uh, uh, that are ethical issues uh, and topics in the um, field of geography. Um, I've also been asked to, um, to speak to some um, of the ethical dilemmas that I've experienced over the years uh, in my long career uh, with geography in, in many different uh, sectors. So um, next slide, please. Uh, <clears throat> so the overview, uh, we'll do two things. First, I'm going to provide this overview of ethical issues and topics uh, in geography. Um, and the AG has uh, been evolving a statement of professional ethics uh, since uh, 1998 with significant revisions and updates in uh, 2005 and 2009. So we're going to uh, survey briefly and discuss some of the most important ethical topics and issues in this document, particularly as they pertain to geographical research. And then secondly, um, will highlight a few pressing geographical and geospatial research uh, ethical issues uh, and go into them in a bit more detail, although we don't have a lot of time. But uh, we'll look at dual, dual use uh, geographic research, privacy and geospatial data confidentiality, intergenerational ethics and human rights, and then COVID-19 and uh, geographic health research. Uh, and uh, in our discussion of, of uh, COVID-19, I would also, we'll also uh, have a poll, a poll set up for the um, audience to make a, an ethical decision. We'll pose a question to you about uh, COVID-19, privacy, and ethics. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how that, that, that comes out. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so the... Uh, Uh, before I start, I, I just uh, many, I know there are many students and uh, people from other countries and, uh, on this uh, webinar. And so um, I just wanted to, to uh, uh, clarify that uh, ethics refers to rules provided by an external source, such as codes of conduct in uh, workplaces and, uh, um, and then morals, uh, which are often confused with ethics, refers to an individual's own principles regarding right and wrong. There's a wide range of philosophical theory and interpretation on the nature and basis of ethics. So people come from many, many different uh, directions toward these, uh, these topics. Next, next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> so uh, a few, few of the, uh, the AG's statement of professional ethics is quite lengthy. And uh, I've taken out a few excerpts that I thought uh, would be most salient. Uh, and that could be covered in the time that we have. Uh, notice that this has been updated uh, uh, twice already. 
So it's an evolving document as all ethics uh, statements should be. Um, and uh, the, during my uh, term at the AG, it was updated in uh, 2005 and 2009. Uh, and I take, played a, some portion, uh, some, some uh, role in that. Um, so the preamble says that, um, well, you can read it here, the members of the AAG recognize that the conduct of geographic research and analysis, as well as the transmission of geographic theories, um, concepts and information involves a wide variety of, of ethical considerations. So almost everything that we do uh, has some kind of a slice of, of ethical consideration. Um, as I mentioned, it's very broad and, and uh, uh, this statement was, dra was drafted with the intent uh, to encourage active, thoughtful engagement with ethical issues, both within the scope of the statement and in relationship to various professional circumstances confronted by geographers. Uh, something that you will hear over and over again in discussions of ethics is, is discussion um, and, uh, and, and conversation. Uh, really, uh, these ethics, um, mean a lot of different things to different people and their backgrounds and where they, how and where they come to, uh, to get their ethical uh, guidance and, uh, and their moral, uh, uh, consider their moral uh, <clears throat> beliefs. Next slide, please. So um, <clears throat> I'd like to talk, raise the issue of um, ethical behavior during field research. This is in the, and, and, and this is sort of is the, the bottom one as well, uh, research involving indigenous peoples, ethnic minorities, and, and other vulnerable groups. Uh, geographers, almost all geographers do field work. And uh, we're out all around the world uh, interacting with people, um, learning from them, and, uh, and, uh, and sometimes uh, teaching them uh, in our work. And... Uh, that's one of the great things about geography. We, we're, we're, we don't uh, spend most of our time behind a, a computer screen. Some do, but uh, but uh, we really uh, uh, are do a lot of field work. And, and uh, I've had I've been privileged to be able to to go to almost every country in the world during my career. But uh, there are some uh, important guidelines and principles uh, governing field research. Um, it, uh, Places, people, things should be treated just as researchers would like others to treat their own places, possessions, and themselves. Now, that's a little bland and sort of golden rulish, but uh, but it's really a, a, a something to take very seriously. Uh, in the case of environmental studies um, focused on non-human topics, field research should be conducted in ways that minimize long-term impacts. And um, it's, that's important because uh, most most uh, most research doesn't re doesn't really uh, deal with the environment to the extent that that we do, and uh, not only uh, physical environment but cultural and environmental studies may generate data that are co-opted by others with damaging results. Um, so it's it's careful. Uh, you have to be very careful on how you handle and disseminate uh, that, that uh, uh, those results. Um, now, research involving indigenous peoples uh, and ethnic minorities, etc. Um, there, are, some of these the groups are, are potentially uh, vulnerable or marginalized, uh, raises special challenges, and requires special care, regardless of whether the research is conducted by members of those groups. For indigenous communities, researchers need to engage in a process of respect, reciprocity and mutual benefit in the research. Uh, and I comment on that. Uh, these, these principles are explicitly uh, outlined in nine guidelines for research in, indig in indigenous peoples. Um, and that, uh, those were uh, led by uh, Doug Herbin at the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian. It's a very, very cogent uh, 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 set of uh, guidelines. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with the American Indian tribes uh, for many years, living on the Northern Cheyenne Reservation for two years and working for a national organization uh, representing 25 Indian tribes who had uh, uh, energy resources on uh, environmental and economic uh, uh, 
um, uh, issues. Um, and I, you know, the, the, what I always did in those circumstances was, was to say, you know, I, I would always ask, what is it you need? What is it you want? And how, how can I help you? And uh, those are three good questions to ask wherever you go. Uh, and uh, not presume to have answers, not presume to, uh, uh, to know more about uh, things and, and, and to know th about things in all of the different ways that people can w know about things. So um, it's, a, it's a rich way, I tell you, it's, it's something that um, uh, I hope all of you get a chance to do is to really work closely with, with uh, indigenous peoples at some point in, 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 in your career. It's a, it's, you gain a lot and, and uh, I always tried to make sure that they gained a lot and we did some very, very positive things during, during those times. Next slide, please. Um, professional relations with one another, uh, collegiality is a core um, <laughs> principle of, of uh, ethics. And uh, I think for the most part are, you know, you see among geographers and, and uh, you see people are, are pretty, they're pretty decent, they're pretty good. Not very many people get in, go into geography or for fame or, or riches. And uh, they tend to be quite interested in, in what they're doing and, and quite straightforward and, and honest. Uh, uh, during my, uh, my tenure as AG um, executive director, though I, I was, you know, I, I was exposed to um, a, a dozen or so incidences uh, in the in the discipline, not involving me, but in the discipline, where um, uh, uh, unfounded accusations and, and rumors about co co colleagues um, became an issue, and and it's one of the most uh, heartbreaking kinds of situations. And and I think that if I were to say uh, one of the most, I would say one of the most egregious um, form of uh, violation of ethics. Uh, is when that sort of thing happens. And I, uh, I, would, I would hope that our entire um, uh, <clears throat> discipline would rise up and oppose that when it does happen. So uh, <clears throat> avoiding um, discrimination, discrimination and harassment. Uh, uh, this is very much, I think, in, in, in our, our current uh, culture. And um, the AG has uh, developed also a prof professional conduct policy and procedures uh, which grew out of uh, sexual harassment um, policies and so forth. Uh, and that's been developed over the last uh, uh, four or five years. Uh, you can find this document uh, and you can find all of these um, uh, the statement of, uh, of ethics on the AG's um, website, just aag.org and then go to governance and then go to uh, um, statement of professional ethics. And you can find this uh, expanded on in great, in great uh, detail. Um, sustaining community, um, geographers should strive to create and maintain a diverse, pluralistic and inclusive professional community. Uh, and again, here I think is an issue, is in an area where um, we really need to do a lot more work. Um, We've been an organization for 115 years or so, and yet we've, we've, we've not seen um, a woman or a person of, of color uh, in, in leadership positions in our organization, uh, in top leadership positions. And uh, we, we uh, in our geography departments, we, uh, we're, we're, uh, there's a lot of rhetoric and so forth, but uh, Joe Darden, who's been a mentor of mine for years, uh, stresses the point that uh, that kind of change is only going to happen when in hires are made. And uh, so I think we really, uh, it's no longer, I'm no longer making those decisions, but, um, but I would urge um, all of you to, to think very, very seriously about uh, what it would mean to our discipline uh, if we were to have a, a woman of color, for example, uh, in a leadership position, strong leadership position in our, our uh, dis in a discipline. I think that would be transformative. And I hope that at some point in, in, in the future that will happen. Um, uh, so 
Uh, so that's a, a thing to really focus on. Next slide, please. Uh, relations uh, here with two different uh, uh, groups. Um, relations with the larger scholarly community and religious, relations with people, places, and things. Um, some of these are just sort of self-evident, but um, I'd like to, to uh, comment on the first uh, item here. Uh, geography is really a, a, an interdisciplinary discipline, and uh, uh, we have a very core need, not, not just to, you know, uh, go out and have lunch and go to meetings with, uh, you know, uh, other organizations, um, but our, our, our research really is entangled with so many other uh, scholar, like scholarly communities. And uh, I think a core need for us is to uh, is, is for really to focus on impactful geographic research and scholarship. Which, if we do that, that will we I guarantee you we will have a great relations with the larger scholarly community. Uh, and that's the one way, the one uh, message I think that that I'd like to leave um, a lot of people with. It's also um, it's also important because we learn we also are, are learning a lot from everyone else. So because we're so interdisciplinary in our, our work, um, uh, the way we, we are going to grow our, our, our discipline and stature and in uh, students wanting to come in uh, is through that kind of research and, and scholarly work. Uh, there's been a lot of emphasis, um, uh, I guess, on, on, on public relations, PR and so forth. Uh, that's that's useful and it's important and, and and so forth. But I think that that it's um, it's definitely secondary to uh, our scholarly and research missions and teaching. So uh, then relations with people, places, and things. Um, this is um, uh, this is uh, something that um, geographers do more of, I think, uh, than than probably. Any, most other disciplines, uh, because we're traveling all the time, we're we're we're, we're focused on places. Um, when we're doing geographical research, um, we're we're having these same kinds of inter interactions that we talked about in terms of uh, of of, um, um, of indigenous peoples and so forth. But uh, wherever we go, we're in a d different culture, and we really have to be respectful of that, and we have to enjoy it. Uh, so, um, there are formal ways of, of uh, guiding our research uh, in addition to sort of common sense. Uh, and those are uh, institutional review boards. And uh, they're kind of a, for most of us, it's, it's a little bit of a pain in the neck, but it's something that you have to go through uh, when you are writing research proposals. And then after they get funded, you really have to uh, uh, have that reviewed, have your work reviewed and make sure that uh, human subjects are, are being treated uh, as they should be. Um, and then uh, our guidelines here uh, also go on to state that research in the geographical sciences should be conducted only after careful consideration of uh, these fundamental principles. There are four of them here. Uh, some are a bit repetitive, but respect for persons and communities um, the right of individuals and groups to be informed that they are research subjects to be given adequate information so that they can make informed consent decisions and to have content confidentiality arrangements to, to protect uh, data, interviews, et cetera, other information to the extent possible. Uh, and that's pretty, that's, that's pretty um, important. Uh, you know, we have had incidences in geography. Um, uh, there was one, uh, research project project in Oaxaca, Mexico that uh, had been funded by the, the military and, and the, uh, there was perhaps uh, some miscommunication or uh, there wasn't a lot, an, enough uh, uh, <clears throat> clarity in terms of, of uh, the funding and, and uh, of that project. It ended up being a, a very controversial uh, <clears throat> event in, in geography's history and uh, took a lot of energy and time. Uh, but I think uh, lessons, uh, good lessons have come out of it for everyone. Um, it, was a, uh, it was a project by the American Geographical Society. 
but but all of us came together and tried to look at that and find out what we could then do looking forward. So it was um, an important uh, reminder that we need to really uh, take this uh, seriously. Now, equity is another uh, thing that pervades our, our AD, all, not, not just uh, AEGs, but all, equi all um, ethics issues. Sharing of research, research results that is practical and legal with individuals and communities affected by the research. Now, uh, equity also is a key factor in so, in so many uh, ethical decisions. Uh, you know, for example, is it ethical to, uh, you know, have someone go get your groceries during the COVID-19 uh, uh, crisis? Uh, are you paying someone to go do that uh, whose family might, who, the person who you're paying uh, may become infected, maybe his family or her family would become infected? Uh, so you have to look at, at equity issues almost all the time and, 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 and disparate power relationships when you're looking at, at ethics. Um, so it's, it's a precondition of coming to conclusion. If, if people, um, uh, you know, if, if people are not, uh, you know, have no choice but to do that sort of work, um, we have to say, should I be going to the grocery store and getting that my own groceries or should I uh, defer the, all of the risk of that uh, to someone else by paying for it just because I have more money than they have. And so that, those kinds of issues and those kinds of thought patterns I think are important and equity is always and always should be uh, one aspect of that conversation and that uh, final decision. Um, Beneficence, uh, I think you hear about this all the time, the maximization of benefits and the minimization of harm from research. Um, you, you know, kind of look at what you're doing. Is, a, is, it, is it really beneficial? You know, life is short. And, and uh, even if uh, it's something that you're doing that, uh, that you do, that you do that, but it, it's not beneficial or it's, it's, it's you know, it's, it's not worth doing. Um, so, uh, and certainly you want to avoid doing things that harm others. Um, and then respect for ecosystems. Uh, this one, this is, um, this is pretty uh, straightforward, but it also is unique to, um, not pretty unique to uh, geography. Uh, we have in, in physical geography and our, our human geography and our, uh, our GIS and GI science uh, uh, communities of researchers, uh, we're always involved, probably more than others, with ecosystems, biodiversity, natural resources, climate, landforms, and so forth. Um, and I think uh, this raises a, con a point I wanted to make, uh, and I'll do it here. Um, the uh, I've been I worked with the AAAS for many years, and uh, we helped found. Uh, something called the Science and Human Rights Coalition, which was a coalition of, a, of, a, uh, of 30 or so um, uh, discipline, disciplinary associations. And um, one of the, 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 the issues that I chose to, to look at is, is sort of this intergenerational inter um, uh, human right. Uh, and I think that, that this is something that we, we all think about when we think about climate change, certainly, but and there are so many other things, soils, uh, sustainable uh, you know, oceans, and so forth. Uh, we really have to think about it. I think there should be uh, an inter international human right to uh, future generations uh, to receive a livable planet from our generation. So uh, there's a lot of interesting work in, in uh, conversation that can be had around this topic and I, I would urge urge you to kind of pick it up uh, the uh, but and uh, also get involved with the uh, science and human rights uh, coalition at AAAS um, we not the AG not, not only helped found that but I served as its uh, chair for the first five of its steering committee for the first five years of its existence uh, it's a good it's a good very good and uh, uh, program and I'd urge you to check it out next please uh, so now, um, 
I want to talk briefly about uh, dual use research in geography. Um, I think most of you know and have heard the term dual use research. That means that uh, you're doing research that has, uh, can, can be very positive, can be very helpful um, for the world and, and, and so forth. And uh, yet it uh, can also then uh, become used for other purposes. Uh, you know, atomic physics uh, physicist, you know, uh, you know, came up with uh, fission and fusion, and um, and then sort of the results of those uh, predictably um, were, you know, the atomic bomb and, and so forth. So, um, you know, you can look at Robert uh, Oppenheimer and, and his sort of um, regrets over some of the work that he did there and. Uh, uh, and I would say even even in my own career, um, when we first developed the, the real-time interactive GPS GIS systems and, and uh, um, fit the tools and did work around the world with those, um, I you know we we started out we were we were doing uh, environmental work, transportation work, um, uh, energy work, and so forth, and um, with with those tools and then eventually everybody we started getting a lot of interest from um, other countries we started getting a lot of interest from uh, from the military and, and defense uh, agencies and uh, um, and the intelligence community and so forth and and uh, it, those uh, those uh, <clears throat> the developments that we, we we did there we were quite concerned about uh, how they were in a final finally end up uh, doing it now for better or worse. Um, uh, they're ubiquitous, but they're also ubiquitous in, in, um, in how we fight our wars. Uh, our, our wars now are, are basically one great big uh, real-time interactive GPS GIS process where everything, every feature, every moving activity is all integrated and, and uh, monitored and act upon uh, in real time with with location and with underlying geographic information of those areas. So um, these are kinds of things that you kind of live with and you try to figure out how to uh, uh, make something happen. And I think that, um, you know, I've chosen to, to become quite involved in human rights and, and human rights acti activities and organizations. And, uh, and I think there's a, there's, uh, that's useful, but, but you can also use technology uh, upon technology. And uh, there's a, a program at Howard called the Te Tech and Human Values Initiative. And that's um, <clears throat> designed to, uh, to um, leverage the university's uh, resources to build capacity and collaborations that empower humankind to shape technology rather than be shaped by it. And uh, this is something that, you know, in my ongoing work, I, I, try, to, uh, I try to focus on, on how, you know, there's a, just such a plethora of technologies out there, but, you know, how can we um, either technically or through policies uh, blunt the uh, negative aspects of, of those uh, things that we've done. Next slide. Uh, types of dual use uh, research uh, in our evolving geospatial technologies are, are, are very extensive. Um, of course, they involve all the things we've been talking about that I've been involved in this kind of stuff, the first real time sensor inputs and so forth. Uh, and then as sort of from this became a, a spatial temporal data explosion of data gathered uh, then the building of cyber um, GIS infrastructure to, to, um, to house and manage it. And uh, spatial data analytics, um, including now artificial intelligence and decision making. Um, I think, personally, I think that, that artificial intelligence is, is, uh, is really fraught with, uh, with uh, some uh, outcomes that would be, not be uh, to all of our advantages. Uh, it's a way of uh, making those who have access to certain things even more uh, 
have, have deeper uh, access to it. So it's also something that uh, could be very dehumanizing in certain ways. Uh, I think we should all keep an eye on that, see what we can use it for that's uh, useful and, and good, and uh, really take a look at, at, at uh, where it might be going in the next uh, five, 10 years and further on. Uh, okay, next slide. So this was, um, this is just the, uh, the uh, something about uh, the, the uh, kinds of work that we did. Next slide. Uh, and this is the kind of uh, system that, that, that we built up with all of the positioning and attribute data gathering and sensors inputs and, uh, and tracking and so forth. Um, next slide. So um, dual use is, is really uh, something to consider and something to, to, uh, to act on uh, to the extent that one can. And uh, particularly if you have the, the, the technical uh, ability and the, or the philosophical insight to uh, um, address those issues, I think it's, it's almost a, uh, an obligation that you have to, uh, have to follow through on. Um, it's important we all, I think everybody uh, understands the geospatial data and its privacy and confidentiality issues. But, um, but it's also important that qualitative research uh, methods in geography require uh, attention to research subject, uh, human subject uh, privacy. Um, you know, interviews, uh, lots of uh, locations and lots of cultural things that may or may not be um, uh, good to, to disclose um, are, at, uh, are at play in uh, qualitative research. So let's not overlook that. Uh, next slide, please. Um, there are some, some good things happening around this area, and that is a lot of, there's quite a bit of re research uh, going on in trying to find solutions for data privacy, data confidentiality issues. Um, I've been working with the team um, with, uh, through three, three uh, NSF grants to try to build up a, a geospatial virtual data enclave within which uh, confidential data uh, could be, um, uh, well, it could be archived, um, but it also it could be uh, analyzed uh, within uh, a safe uh, and, and uh, a safe um, environment. And uh, that's really important because, um, you know, if you can't, uh, you, everybody has to write uh, data management plans, whether they're, you're getting an NSF or, in a, or NIH grants, uh, you have to, you have to say, how are you going to, what are you going to do with that data after you're done with this research that we're paying you to do? Um, and so you, you know, the, right now, uh, if your data, the idea behind that, I should say, is, is the impetus to want to share scientific research. So, so get it out there, share it. Don't put it in your desk drawer. Don't keep it on your computer and not uh, share that data uh, and that research. So there's been a, the, the, the institutions that fund research want to get it out into the world uh, so others can build on it um, and replicate it. Uh, but if you can't access it because it's confidential, then you can't build on it. You can't share it. And uh, so a lot of the, the impetus in the, in the management plans sort of came to a screeching, screeching halt when people began to understand uh, locational privacy. And the location is so uh, central to data confidentiality uh, that it, it, it is uh, it really a, a affects a very large number of research, research projects at NSF uh, all across the discipline, sociology, anthropology, um, engineering, and so forth. Um, and uh, so what we've done is we, we've developed a, a, a virtual geospatial data enclave uh, specifically for geospatial data uh, research so that it can be shared, it can be built upon by other scientists, it can be uh, replicated uh, if you can't 
access you can't if you can't replicate research you don't have science and it's a core thing that you have to do if uh, and if you can't get the data then you can't replicate it so there you don't you know it's, you can't continue to build on it as all science should so um, we're, we've had some very very promising uh, outcomes in, in this pathway of of, of, uh, of Vir geospatial virtual data enclaves and the, the good thing about them is you can access them from your uh, desktop uh, uh, computer you don't have to go travel to three or four other states and you know enter a cement block uh, area in order to look for the data so that project is a is, is really a exciting and uh, we're starting to see some some major uh, results coming out of it uh, so there are, are, are good, good, way, good things happening in, in the data confidentiality realm for us, particularly for geographers. Next slide. Uh, just, uh, I will let you kind of just read through this, but um, this, this summarizes uh, some of the research methods that we're using. Next slide. We're also adding a lot of uh, masking and, and uh, spatial statistics uh, uh, software into this system. Next slide. Uh, and also uh, something that's been, uh, really it's, it's about five or six years old, but it's been uh, sort of on hold for a number of years. Uh, we're working with uh, several other universities to try to develop an international geospatial health research network or not uh, to develop it but also revive it um, and uh, we have uh, universities in north america europe and asia um, who will be who are who have been and will be on the uh, steering committee of this uh, new network that we're uh, reviving so thanks next uh next slide um so um COVID-19 in geographic research, as you, if you read the newspapers, if you turn on the television, it, it is, there's a tremendous amount of information going on about uh, COVID-19 and, and geographic research. And uh, there are now dozens of, uh, of uh, conferences, dozens of forums and so forth. Uh, uh, um, the Center, Center for Geographic Analysis at uh, Harvard uh, held a forum a couple of weeks ago on, on the very topic uh, here. Uh, how can we, uh, you know, look at geospatial research, but also geospatial solutions to COVID-19. And it was, it was very interesting. So the, those of you who want to go on an exploding <laughs> um, research area, of course, uh, I'm sure you've already jumped into this uh, area, but it's very important. Um, and I want to, next slide, please. Um, okay, I said go back one, if you would, kind of like this. Um, so I want to address a little bit about uh, some of the debate on COVID-19 and, and, uh, and what turns out to be um, sort of locational privacy issues to a large extent. And there's a big debate whether we, you know, have uh, Apple and Google do uh, work on, on uh, exposure notification, uh, that's all voluntary and um, it's, it's not really location, it's, it's uh, looking at, uh, at, uh, at gatherings, basically, who's, who's near, who's, who's near uh, others. It uh, doesn't really involve uh, GPS, so it doesn't give notions but, notions, but it does look where people aggregate. Uh, but there are lots of other um, uh, methods that are going on that are, are uh, perceived at least to be uh, pretty more, more successful. And that is where uh, you're really looking at, uh, at location, uh, you're looking at addresses, you're, taking, you're looking at uh, working with those people who've tested positive to, um, to find their, the people that they've interacted with and then reach out to those people and so forth. And that's the, that, that appears to be the very, the most successful way of, of really curbing uh, the number of deaths and uh, illnesses uh, and 
ultimately the length of the shutdowns that have occurred. Um, so I'd like to have you all think about that. Uh, you know, the the, uh, the, uh, the tracing uh, the tracing of people, uh, sort of testing, treating, and and uh, <clears throat> and tracking or tracing is is really a method that uh, can be done very loosely. Um, and would probably require more than half of the population to adopt them uh, as for them to really be useful. But um, I think in conjunction with that, there there still is a question about uh, how do we how do we approach that thing with uh, with privacy. So I'd like to propose a poll and a, a question to you. Uh, could could you put up this the uh, question for the poll, please? Um, so the poll is, um, you know, after looking at, at the ethical issues, your own obligations to others, uh, your own concerns to one's one's self, and and your own uh, well-being. Uh, question is, and this is kind of looks. Has, has a dozen different or several different uh, ethical uh, uh, aspects to it. Um, if you were tested positive for COVID-19, would you give up some of your privacy, such as name, address, location, and travel routines, if it, would, if it could be shown to be effective in reducing COVID-19 deaths and illnesses for others? Yes or no? Uh, this is a question that you know it, it involves uh, it involves uh, dual use technology such as uh, the systems that Google and Apple have proposed. Now the same uh, same technology that they're developing and proposing could be also used by a, by a, uh, other countries or <laughs> who knows maybe ourselves. Uh, but but could could look uh, a dictator for example could could use that same technology to say, okay, here's this person, and then who's, who, who's in contact with them? Who were, were, who are the, those that, uh, that this person hangs out with and so forth. But, but uh, so there, there's a, there's a lot of dual use things that can come out of what, uh, revolve out of this, that proposal. But, uh, and then of course, there's the privacy issues. Um, so, so uh, if you would, please, um, Click this, and we'll have we'll announce the uh, the results. And they're really interesting. So, it, it, in one question, we're we're looking at several different topics that we've discussed already. And when COVID nineteen, uh, geospatial data and and tracking and dual use technologies and, and, and their involvement. So, okay, uh, next slide. So, um, I'm going to click that off. Um, so here's a, just a list of a few ethics uh, resources that you may not uh, be as familiar with as some others. Um, and some of the work that's being done uh, uh, now at Harvard uh, on ethics. Uh, so there's a URL at the bottom here of the screen. I don't, <clears throat> can you roll that screen up a little bit to, so people can see the, so there's a URL here. If you just go to ethics.harvard.edu, uh, you will um, have a, a lot of resources involved there. Uh, and again, uh, if you want to uh, take, a, take a look at the, um, uh, <clears throat> the statement of uh, of um, professional ethics uh, at the AG. Just go to AG, click click uh, AG dot, uh, dot org, uh, click governance, and then click uh, on the on the um, <clears throat> statement. So uh, that's all I have, and I I uh, I'd like to um, turn it over to. Glenn, and uh, when you get, uh, do we have a count on the for the poll yet?
So this is interesting. Um, a very large number of you, 85% would be uh, willing to give up privacy uh, information if it were help others. That's a, I guess this, this says uh, a lot about uh, geographers and uh, their generosity and their, their caring. So and I was happy to see that. So um, with that, I'm going to uh, close out. I want to thank all of you for your time and, and uh, the opportunity to, to chat with you. I wish it were more of a, of a two-way conversation, but um, I hope it's useful. And I have tried to design this. Uh, it's, it's, very, it's basic in some ways, but I was trying to uh, ask to sort of set the groundwork for the whole series. So I wanted to get a, a broad range of issues out there. And then uh, also uh, uh, do that way in which I can share some of my own uh, experience with ethics. So, so thank you very much. Glenn, do you have some questions? So well, thank you very much. And yes, uh, the people who are viewing this do have a, a lot of questions. And I'm not sure we'll get through all of them, but we'll, we'll, we'll work our way, way through them and try not to be re repetitive. Um, Someone was very interested in the updating of the AAG statement on ethics. And of course, you said that's a living document. But they, you know, what drove that 2009 update? And they're wondering, was there a specific controversy that, that arose that, uh, that caused you to, uh, to relook at that uh, 2000 and 2009 and update the uh, ethics statement? Yeah, that was, uh, <clears throat> that was actually what happened. Um... This was the project, uh, the American Geographical uh, Society uh, project in Oaxaca, Mexico. And um, that became very, uh, a very controversial issue. Uh, it was be kind of, uh, part of it was because it was, and I don't want to speak for the people who were involved in that process and, and I'm sure they'll, they'll have a, have a, a strong, a strong uh, uh, nope. Uh, ability to um, to do it, but that was the that was the reason, and uh, part of it was because it was funded by um, uh, U.S. military, and part of it was because, uh, as claim, claimed by uh, some of the folks down there, that they, they weren't as fully um, informed of all of that. And I think that you know what I've done in, in my international work, I always have written uh, disclosures about if where this funding is coming from and so forth, and. Uh, you know, I think that that uh, that incident uh, uh, really resulted in, in quite a bit of uh, rancor uh, in the discipline, uh, and uh, it eventually uh, we tried to, you know, say, you know, how, how can we learn from this at, at some point? And so I think we did learn a lot from it. I think everybody did, and uh, uh, hopefully that uh, means that in the future. Uh, we really uh, look hard at, at, at the disclosures of funding, the disclosures of, of what's, what's going to happen with the data and so forth. Thanks. Well, thank you. So we, we have an international audience for this, and I am going to ask a question from, uh, that came from the international audience from an, another country. And it really has to do about uh, our relationship, again, and it, it, it goes back to what the question you just answered, relationship as researchers to uh, native communities, indigenous peoples, and things like that. And, and really the question, the heart of the question is, is do you, you know, do you see that, that the progress and the work in terms of ethical ways of uh, working in indigenous lands has been more focused and is stronger in the social sciences humanities? And how is it building and how is it being applied in the natural and physical sciences end of geography? The, the physical geographers going out in the land so that we are not seen as uh, settler colonists in terms of our, our research and, uh, and our, our taking of knowledge from the land. Um, yeah, you know, I think that, the, I think that that's a lot of questions in one, but, um, but I do think that the, uh, our discipline has gotten a lot, has learned a lot uh, over the years. And, um, uh, you know, uh, working with American Indian tribes for for uh, well uh, for for many years, um, you know, you you basically you have to ask what what do you want, uh, and what 
what you know what does your governing group want what what do you want on this project and how can we help you and uh, you know on occasion there will be something that people want that I, I i say i don't want you know that's i'm not going there because uh, i think it may be a little off base but uh but in terms of doing doing that work not only have geographers um become more sophisticated in these areas but but the indigenous peoples have i can certainly say uh in in terms of american indian uh, uh american indians um i worked for 25 different tribes um and they have become so sophisticated they have a very uh keen uh understanding of what is in their self-interest and they are very uh good i but they're very good at saying selecting people that they know they can work with and who will respect what it is that they want to do rather than trying to foist some kind of policy or uh sentiment onto them so uh, and that that's happened um, as more and more um people become lawyers become uh you know geographers let's we need a lot more geographers from that and they're most uh, ge most uh, american uh indian reservations uh are using gis they're using a lot of they they are very interested in geography and uh, very sophisticated in in uh in how they move forward Col of course cultural um, um heritage and legacy is very important too uh, both uh current and and uh, and historic we, we had a number of questions about, you know, protecting group identity, group uh, differences, things like that. And, and one of the questions was, you know, with big data and with things like uh, remote sensing, which we're using, you might have the individual participants identity protected. But what about, you know, the identification of the specific neighborhood, the specific region, things which you would register, let's say, on a satellite image, you would write about which then would identify and classify a whole group by the location in which you're sensing it and studying. And, uh, and also then how do you inform? You talked about informing the subjects of your research, but if your research is a satellite analysis of an entire country or state, how do you do that? So how do we treat the fact that we're dealing with big, big data and we, we do have, even if the individual is identifiable, their neighborhood is, and how do we get consent for that? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, I think that that um, part of that is is that uh, one has to look at, at whatever kind of added data you have gathered and see um, and, and and look at it in terms of should this be archived and not distributed, and uh, if there is a if there is a reason for that, uh, you know that would be one of the human subjects issues in a, in a funded research project. Now, uh, people go out and do all sorts of things uh, on their own. And, um, and I think that, uh, you know, we as geographers have to have a responsible approach to that. And, uh, and, you know, there are ways, you know, a lot of there are a lot of joint projects uh, that involve big data and, and uh, remote sensing and so forth, which is becoming more and more um, used and, and of course much much better resolution um but uh there are there are a lot of uh, country to country um activities there and, and there are a lot of uh, uh corporate uh activities going on in that in that same same realm and uh, uh i think we you know that that can basically only be uh monitored by either uh, international uh, organizations or uh, major state government uh, organizations. So that's where the, the regulation of that should occur. So we're almost up against a time bell. I do want to ask just quickly one more question that's sort of come up. And this is, you talked about the difference between ethics and morals. And this then, at the beginning of your talk, and this also arises where scientists and geographers, the, the difference between objective science and then becoming advocates, right? Where our moral values make us want to advocate for a certain position. Just it, it's in short answer, how do we face this dilemma where our morals may not um, 
you know, would cause some conflict between the ethics of objective scientific research and things like that. How do we navigate those, those waters between objective scientist and advocate? Well, I, I don't think that we have to choose. I think you can do both. Um, there's, there's no reason uh, that uh, I do it all the time. I mean, we're writing letters, we're, you know, we're trying to uh, impact uh, federal legislation. We, we just did pass the, the new Geospatial Data Act a couple of years ago. Uh, but um, yeah, you, that's, you know, you're a person, you can, you can have your, uh, your, your beliefs, you can have your, your morals and your ethics, and you can, you know, you can decide to act on that as you're doing other research. Now, it doesn't, shouldn't mean that you should uh, skew your research to, you know, reflect a belief that you have. If you're doing research, you, you need, you know, you need to look at science and, and, and be as uh, accurate and, and straightforward and and, uh, and, uh, and and faithful to that re that research project. That that should not change. But you might the, the projects you select might change. But but your research should not be, uh, you know, you know, twisted in some way because you want uh, a certain political outcome to 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 happen. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, we've, we've come to our time. We have many, many more questions. I'm sorry I can't get to that. I would like to thank Doug Richardson for providing this stimulating discussion today and thought-provoking. And I want to thank all of you for participating and for providing your uh, questions and, uh, and uh, working with us in the poll. And uh, I do want to remind, and I'll end with one last uh, slide, that this is just the beginning of the conversation that we're going to be having uh, uh, more webinars on this topic. And we invite you to join us for those. The next one will feature Dr. Marilyn Brown, who's a Regents and Brooks Briars Professor of Sustainable Systems at Georgia Tech. And she is newly, in, uh, uh, newly elected to the National Academy of Sciences. And uh, Dr. Uh, Dara Sadal, who is a geoprivacy researcher at uh, Globe Chalk Consulting. And that's coming up on Thursday, June 11th at 11 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific. So thank you again, uh, Douglas Richardson, and thank all of you for joining us today.